Oh yeah, that's the way you fix it right there. Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com. Um, as most of you have seen on my live show, I haven't actually put this on video on my YouTube channel yet, so here it is. Um, basically what I have here is a bottle of hydrogen, thanks to a rod, as I've mentioned in the past multiple times. Um, he has also purchased the generator that I'm playing with. And um, it's basically a 7 horsepower Chicago Electric that is from um, Harbor Freight. So, overhead valve engine. Um, the only modifications that I've made to it at this time is this intake manifold. And basically, this intake manifold has four ports in it. Alright, it's right there, you can see it, and I fit it between the intake uh, carburetor and the actual intake itself. So it's right behind the carb and there are four separate inputs here as you can see. I'm only using the bottom two at the moment. I'm using one for the overhead valve port and I'm using the other one for the hydrogen inlet. Um, I ran this a little bit already. It is slightly warm. It's not cold right now. It's not hot by any means. Um, this meter here, I'm metering out of my uh, cylinder here. Here's what I want to show you. Alright, background lighting's bad. Basically, I'm at about 1700 PSI. Um, that's the pressure in the tank. My outlet pressure, I am uh, between, what, 5 and 8, something like that. So I literally have like no pressure coming out of this whatsoever. It's extremely low, um, and that's because I don't need that much. Um, this is a 3 8 line coming out of here. It's going to a standard flashback arrestor that you can purchase for hydrogen. Got a valve here, a flow meter, which I'll talk about in just a second. Something cool you guys can do. And then I have uh, Justin's from uh, JDC Products, his flashback arrestor. Good little device. Um, thank you, Justin, for that, and uh, hopefully you get some orders out of this, because um, I know that uh, you make good products, and people should definitely give them a try. Reasonably priced, so. Um, the main reason I have this second flashback arrestor is because I'm using it as a, uh, a way to uh, stop the suction from pulling up my ball and my flow meter here, because what happens is the, the rate is so low that it's trying to suck more out of this hose than it can get, and this ball bounces. Um, so it's doubling its effect right now. It still bounces a little, but that's mainly because of, uh, again, the suction. So I'm using this carburetor um, as, as well as this intake manifold that I made. If you guys want to see better pictures of this manifold, you can go over to the forums and check that out. I'll post the link in the description for that thread. Also post your comments there if you'd like, and I'll respond there. Uh, the carburetor, I'm really using it as a device to shut off the amount of air going into this engine, as well as the original idle throttle control. Um, the governor, basically, is what it is, and it's uh, a self-governing motor. So, again, this is a generator. Um, right here's your rated watts, 3,050, 3,500 max. This is actually only a 20 amp, 25 amp, one, uh, 120 volt. It's also got the DC output. Right now I'm not running anything off this. Basically what today, what I want to show you is, is the actual least amount of hydrogen you can put into an engine just to get it to idle. Now most people would consider idle a certain RPM, but I am considering idle in this video the least amount to just keep it rotating. All right. And what's interesting is I'm going to show you guys a very cool way to use a standard gauge, no matter what it is, no matter what kind you got, no matter what gas it's for. One thing you have to remember is that this particular meter here is for oxygen. So when you read this, it's not going to read correctly. This particular meter is for air. And you can see it right there, it's um, cubic feet per hour. Okay. And what we can do is no matter what type of gas gauge that you have, you can convert what you have because you know the type of gas you're using. So this is for air. And we're calculating it for hydrogen. So here's how that's done. I will post all this over at the forums, but for now, you can see it here. Okay, so if, uh, if I'm calculating the air, which is 1, all right, it's a ratio of 1, the hydrogen flow conversion number 
is 3.79. There's a chart that I'll post over at the uh, forums of each type of gas. So you can convert from oxygen gauge to another gauge or whatever you'd like. So this is um, cubic feet, I'm sorry, cubic, yeah, anyway, SCFH of air. Okay, that's what I'm calculating. So 5 SCFH divided by 60 is going to give me my uh, SCFM. That's per minute versus per hour. Okay, so my number there is 0.833. If, uh, if I take that number and I put it into the equation, which is basically a multiplier, we know that the number or the rate is 1, so we multiply that by how many we have into our hydrogen number, and we get the flow of hydrogen. So 0 0.0833 SCFM times 7, excuse me, times 3.79 hydrogen, which is our conversion number, we actually get 0.3157. That's SCFM. If we convert that down to liters per minute, 0.3157 SCFM is 8.9369 liters per minute. Okay? If I calculate it at 2.5 SCFH, we come up with a number of 4.4717 liters per minute. Now, what's interesting, this particular gauge, the minimal amount that it will actually be even marked at is 10. There's 50, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. This ball does not even move in this gauge. That's how little bit of hydrogen I'm actually using to run this uh, engine on idle, or at least to keep it moving. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's below five, definitely, because that's our minimum rate, but I'm gonna guess somewhere in the range of 2.5 to five, on that meter is what we're actually running at. So somewhere between three, four, five, six liters per minute. I'm not going to give you exact number because unfortunately this meter isn't accurate enough. I would use this oxygen meter which is much more um, lower flow rate so we, we can actually get that measurement but unfortunately I don't have the correct fitting and I have to get that. So later we can do that or I even probably will just get a different type of gauge. If anyone has any of these gauges that go down to either liters per minute and or anything else who would like to donate if they have one that they would want to do that please let me know. I'll stick my email in the description but you can also go to the forums and do that. So I'm gonna put these earplugs in just in case something explodes. Protect your hearing. Be safe. Safety glasses. Probably be wearing some other stuff because you never know what can happen. So Let's do this. Um, right now I have the choke all the way closed. All right, And I'm again just going to show you the minimal amount of hydrogen that it takes to run this. I'm going to open my garage door. And I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh yeah, bless me. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and run this, and then I'll show you the gauge um, close-up of it. I can turn that up a little bit and we can get a little bit more out of it. That's a little bit more of an idle. You can see the vacuum pulling on it. I can go ahead and turn it up a little bit for you just to see it run a little faster. But I don't have anything correctly calibrated right now.
So there you go. Just a short little demo to show you guys actually how little bit of hydrogen it does take. Now again, I'm not pulling a load, not doing anything like that, but you also have to remember that at this point in time, I've not actually modified any timing or anything on this motor. It just runs, pure hydrogen. Uh, do not forget, this is just hydrogen, not HHO. So don't take that into your equation because that's going to change your output. So there you go. I did open the choke just a little bit to kind of show you. Um, you know, you got to get your fuel mi mixture right. And one thing that I did not get finished with, which is going to help my process a lot, is this is actually an exhaust recycling system. Um, I will probably have to run that through a small cooler, um, just a small heat heat sink, basically, and run it into one of my other ports here, um, which is why I have so many extra ports. The other is actually going to be for ambient, ionized ambient oxygen, or excuse me, uh, ionized ambient air, excuse me, can't speak today. Uh, here's the gas gun. Um, I did do some experiments with this and with this burn o meter. And one thing I will say about my burn o meter is that I did order some clear tubing. And unfortunately, this tubing is not very round. Um, and it's not round enough to fit these pistons in there tight as I'd like. So what I've done is I created these little o rings out of some packing material. And this packing material is actually you know gonna make my seal but yet it's a really slick material it's almost like a vinyl or something weird and um, that's a packing for a, a valve but um, I did order a different size thickness wall tubing as well this is um, polycarbonate tubing I recommend that if you attempt to replicate a device like this don't use the polycarbonate get you something different there's not really as much pressure in here as what I think and as what you guys may think so I'll, you know even like an acrylic may work but uh, I don't really know for sure, and I'll probably have to end up ordering something different unless my other tube does work correctly. So, pretty cool. I did some playing around with that, but not anything to publish just yet. If you guys didn't see my last video, I posted some information on this VIC. I recommend you go watch it. Um, they got the measurements really accurate now, or pretty close to um, good enough for the moment. And uh, go watch that video because it didn't work very well. So, All right. This is Russ with rwgresearch.com. God bless you all. Thank you guys for the help and the support. It's definitely, again, always needed. And with your help and uh, sharing of knowledge and everything else, we'll get where we want to go. Peace and love. Have a good day. God bless you all. Thank you.